Hello everybody, it's me Akansha. I am back on your screens if you have chosen to come back to this channel by your own will, um, unless you are my mother, in which I have made you watch this. This is kind of like a mini March wrap up because I've not read that many books in March. <sighs> so this is a mini May wrap up. I just said mini March wrap up. Clearly I'm living in the wrong month. Um, this is a mini May map wrap up because I haven't really read that much uh, this month because I had exams, my first ever set of exams, but that is a video for another day because I'm not unpacking that. I don't have enough time to unpack that. I think I'll also do a June TBR because I want to flesh out this video a little bit more so it's not just two minutes long. Um, the first book I read in May uh, it's Project Hail Mary by Andrew Weir. This is a sci-fi book. Um, I picked this up because of Hank Green on YouTube. And it, this is a sci-fi book. It's essentially about this man who goes into space for a reason. And I don't want to spoil the book, so I'm not going to say too much about the reason. But basically, Earth is going to be destroyed. Not by climate change, but by something that's even more pressing and even more urgent. So he gets involved in the efforts to do this, basically. And it's kind of told in, in the now, um, him on the spaceship and him trying to figure out why he's here and what is his purpose here. And also um, the past. The past is unpacking everything that leads up to these events. And I really, really enjoyed this book. I gave it kind of four out of five stars uh, on Goodreads. And it is a book that is very heavy on kind of scientific terminology and scientific processes and scientific terms. And I didn't really get all of them, but I think Andrew Xavier does a great job of still engaging a reader's attention, even if they aren't experts in the kind of field of physics, things like that. So good job for that. Um, but would I recommend this book? Yes, I'd recommend this book to anyone looking for a sci-fi read. Um, I thought it was really, really good. This book I'm gonna talk about is You and Me on Vacation by Emily Henry or People We Meet on Vacation. I think it has a different title for the UK and US version. Anyway, we have our two main protagonists. They are just friends. Yeah, they are just friends, but they meet every year, once a year, I think to go on holiday, to go somewhere on vacation, to have a bit of fun and to spend time as friends. But a series of events occur and some stuff goes down and there are some feelings on one side and there are some feelings that will be, that are reciprocated as well, but it's, it's more complicated than that. You know, life isn't that simple. But if you're looking for a really fun read, to read while you're on vacation. I really wish I'd read this when I was holiday, lying on the beach somewhere. It would have put me in the holiday mood, but I didn't. I read it in rainy Scotland, which is great. Um, great ambience for, for any book. Uh, so yeah, it is a really fun holiday book. It's very light, it's very fluffy, and it's really a, a fun read. I also give this four out of five stars. I had a fun time and yeah. The next book. Um, we have is The Ghetto from Bletchley Park by Kathleen McGurl and I gave this book three stars but let me tell you about this book. Uh, some of you may have guessed that Bletchley Park was basically a place in World War II where people broke kind of the codes of the Nazis and intercepted their signals and figured out what they were trying to do basically like maybe where they were gonna um, uh, bomb cities and things like that. So they, they basically um, gleaned uh, intelligence from the Nazis and this was really important and it I think it, was, it maybe even like um, cut the war short by two or three years. Uh, so it was really groundbreaking work. It was really secret work as well and I think one of the most famous figures that came out of this um, was Alan Turing, a really really famous mathematician and, and a really really tragic uh, and sad um, life um, that he lived as well but he did great great things um, for the war effort. Anyway that's a little bit of a his historical moch. Um, but this is a book based on our main character Pamela. It's a really smart ghetto. She 
gets into Oxford University but she gets an offer to work at Bletchley Park and help out in the war effort and she can't really tell anyone this and it's super secret but she's like I want to do something for the war effort so she goes and works in Bletchley Park. We also have Julia who we have in present day and this is a theme, a recurring theme in a lot of World War II novels that I read. There's two perspectives and there's a present day narrative and then there's a past narrative and they somehow interlink and weave together and the past helps the present, uh, the past helps the protagonists in the present deal with things and work things out. And some authors do this really well. Sadly, I didn't think this was executed as well in The Girl from Bletchley Park. First of all, the characters, uh, even Pamela and even Julia, felt really two di dimensional to me um, because it didn't feel like their issues and their problems were fleshed out um, like real people. Um, it kind of even felt like it felt like it was leaning into stereotypes really hard and that's what made things really predictable and I kind of predicted every plot twist, I kind of predicted what would happen with Julia and what would happen with Pamela and the man she was liking and things like that. However, don't be dissuaded because I gave this a three stars because I did enjoy reading it. Um, I just really hoped for more character development, I really hoped for more in-depth discussion of Bletchley Park and the kind of implications of the work there and maybe more of like a commentary on that but yeah overall it was an okay read but it's not my favourite World War II book and I feel like Kathleen Murrow could have done more in dissecting such an interesting and fascinating piece of history um, that we have. But yeah, I would still, I mean, if you're really into your World War II novels, I'd still give it a go. Like, it was an enjoyable read, but I think it lacked in areas such as the characters and just the, the topic at hand wasn't really discussed that well, I think. Half a bit of a location change, I'm sorry. Um, the lighting is actually probably better in here, um, but the background isn't as clean. Oh well, this is what happens when your family come home um, quickly. Now we've done my kind of me reads, which were not many, but most of them were pretty good. I'm going to talk about the books that I want to read in the month of June, which is like my first free full month of summer, which as I've mentioned in this video, is something I'm not ready to talk about yeah so we'll talk about it when the time comes so i have these ah, i showed you showed you a little bit a sneak peek um but these are three books that i'm so so excited to read they're kind of out of my comfort zone but they are for a future video that will be coming out a week from a week today from the from when i upload this video so it'll be it'll be coming out on the 10th of june at 1 p.m so stay tuned because it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be a banger. <laughs> so these are three books. Look how fat this book is. Not to book shame, but it's a thick book. Very ambitious person. I'm optimistic about the number of books I will be reading because I won't have much else to do. So the first book that I'm super, super excited to read open water i've heard so many great things about this primarily from jack edwards the king of booktube and this is basically a black british love story it's about these two people who meet at a pub in south east Lung london and he's a photographer and she's a dancer and it's kind of their love story essentially and i'm really really excited to read it the cover is super cool and it's, I feel like it will be one of those books where you just fall so hard for the characters and you root for them so much, but something's gonna happen to kind of really damage their stories and damage their kind of characters. Um, so I'm so excited to read this and it'll be a five star. I am rooting for this book. My expectations, yeah, I have a thing with having really high expectations, but I think this book will deliver. I think it will. So that is, top priority to read after those three books then we have and because it took me ages to get this on the library uh on libby and I, I can't wait to read it so 
The next book is The Bread the Devil Need. So this is also a book from the, is also a book that has been shortlisted listed for the Women's Prize in Fiction, really about our main protagonist who is Alethea Lopez and she's starting 40 and I think it's a midlife crisis, um, things, something's gone in her life and it makes her think that this is maybe a life that she doesn't want to live and look at this cover, look at it and it is stunning. I mean, I'm gonna pop it up on screen and I can't wait for it. I can't wait to read this. And I've had my eye on this for a while as well. And I it just came through in the library and I was like, yes. Um, the next book is, I think it needs no introduction because this author needs no introduction at all because um, this is Malibu Rising. I feel like this book has been talked about so, 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 so much. Uh, so much so that I had to wait like months on this at the library. I was so close to buying it at Waterstones the other day when I saw it. I was like, Malibu Rising, I, I need to read you. And I wish I was reading this in Malibu. I wish I was reading this by the coast and beautiful blue sparkling water and like a mocktail in hand. Um, but I'm not. I'm sorry, Taylor Jenkins read. I feel like I should, I feel like it's a disservice for this book if I don't do that, but I'm so, so excited to read it. Um, and I don't know much about it because I like going in um, a bit blind um, from the action and the kind of plot of the book, because that's what I did with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and I devoured it and I loved every single moment of it. So, I'll be rising. And the next books I think are a, a bit of a m maybe, so, I want to read the woman in the purple scarf, which is only only like 130 pages. So like I should I should be able to read that. If not, I can save it for July. I've heard it's a very peculiar, strange book. It is a book translated from Japanese. Um, so I'm trying to read more translated literature and open my horizons and things like that. So that is on my list. And I also don't know much about it because uh, I am trying to go in a bit blind um so basically let me read this out to you because it has intrigued me so the woman in the purple skirt is being watched someone is following her always perched just out of sight monitoring which buses she takes what she eats whom she speaks to but this invisible observer isn't a stalker it's much more complicated than that tell me that 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 doesn't just draw you in like instantly and also scare the socks off you i just want to reread some books um this month but i don't know if that's gonna happen i really want to read all the light we cannot see and the station shop the tehran most featured on my first video i've ever uploaded which i'll put in a card somewhere i don't know what side it's on um but yeah the making that video has made me really want to rewatch, rewatch, reread these books very ambitious june tbr but i'm anything if not a overachiever so hopefully we'll get most of them read. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all next week.